Hi, this is Kelly from Home Rogue School and I just wanted to share our Africa unit that we're going to start soon. Um, I, I pre-plan um, this around the world studies. I kind of created it myself. It's kind of a build your library torchlight-esque around the world. I have a lot of picture books. I have some projects. So let's dive right in. Um, we have poetry that we're doing. So we're using the book Around the World on 80 Legs. We're also doing social studies, which is kind of the culture, the homes, the people. Um, we're doing art, geography, habitats, and for each continent I kind of picked a habitat. So for this one we're doing desert and grassland plains. Um, we're doing botany, so for this we're touching on orchids, which we're continuing um, from our South America unit. Um, and then we have succulent and cacti. Um, for animals, we're going to be talking generally about the animals of Africa, but our focus animal, um, in each continent I just chose a focus animal, so our focus animal is going to be reptiles, and um, we're going to be talking about camouflage and different reptiles and their parts and their reproductive cycles and things like that. So with that, I am going to show you what we worked on, so or what we're going to work on. So. Um, I got this geography book. It is by Evan Moore. Um, we did the map skills, which is just kind of general, what, what are the continents and oceans and things like that, uh, and cardinal directions before we started any of our geography units. And then it had landforms and bodies of water, which um, were pulling in landforms. So I pulled in some of the desert ones and um, into our uh, unit today, or this uh, for this unit. Um, so it had an Africa page in there, so we're going to be doing that. It just has a couple of quick questions and then a little map, and it just kind of start, kicks off our um, Africa unit study, so we do that the first day. And then I also have a science notebook that I tend to pull things from. For this particular unit, there just wasn't very much in there that I wanted to pull, so you won't see anything from this notebook, but I like to include it because some people are following the whole series and um, I just want to be sure that no I didn't miss it we just don't have anything from that. So starting with some of our spines um, this is the wondrous workings of planet earth this is kind of one of our main core spines um, it has a table of contents that breaks it out by continent we love this um, book so so much it's really beautiful it has a lot of great pictures and just a little bit of content so we're going to be looking at the Africa and you can see it um, breaks it off into different biomes, has a short paragraph, uh, a couple paragraphs on Africa, not too much to make my kids' eyes glaze over. So we tend to do this the first day as well, along with the Africa um, map from the Evan Moore Geography book. And then um, there are four pages, we do one a day. So this is the Congo Rainforest, I'll read this. They also have these great illustrations with a couple of the animals. Um, my kids typically will pick one thing that we read about or one thing that we see in the pictures and then we might look that animal up in one of our encyclopedias or um, maybe watch a video or YouTube or something like that. So I can tell you, look, just looking at this, there's a glow on the forest floor called chimpanzee fire. So this is about a fungus that um, I guess emanates with special enzymes. So that looks really cool. Might be something that my kids gravitate toward and want to look up. Um, we're also touching on the African savanna, and there's a lot of African, uh, very popular African animals here, like the giraffe and the elephant, the zebra. And then we're also going to be talking about the Sahara Desert, and then the Cape of Africa. And these pictures are just stunning. I just, can we just revel in the beautiful art? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we're going to be doing this over four days. So Africa and then the, um, or five days to Africa and then the four different biomes that that goes through. Um, with that, I have two encyclopedias that we use. So I have this um, visual encyclopedia by DK and then this Encyclopedia of Animals by DK as well. And I like them both for completely different reasons. So I have a five-year-old. This visual encyclopedia has been fantastic for my five-year-old and my seven-year-old really likes it. 
And then my seven-year-old is a little older and ready for more content, so the Encyclopedia of Animals has a lot more content. You can look up each individual animal and there's way more information. So I'm going to show you how I use each of these books. So first with the Visual Encyclopedia of Life on Earth. So they have um, this broken out into classes of animals. So they have reptile section. Um, we read this. There's just a couple snippets of information. And then I really love this feature section. So most lay eggs to reproduce, have dry scaly skin, most are meat eaters, most live in warm climates, and they're cold blooded. At the very least, at the end of this unit, and we go over this multiple times in the unit, but I want my kids to at least know some of these facts. These very broad, general facts about reptiles. And then what we do is I typically do a page or two a day. So we have tur turtles and tortoises, and then we have uh, more tortoises, it looks like. So those two would probably be done on the same day. So turtles and tortoises and tortoises. And then lizards. Another page of lizards. So these three pages might be a second day. And then we have snakes. So a third day for snakes. And then they have crocodiles and alligators. So that's probably a fourth day. So this will probably take us fourth day, four days. I really like this book because it has these the scale of how big the animals are toward an adult, which is um, really great because with COVID right now, we're kind of staying in. Normally we would go to the zoo and kind of see the crocodiles and the lizards and things, and that's just not possible right now. So I really liked that feature of this book. And then I just, there's just a little bit of content and even in general, we kind of skate through bits and pieces of this content. We don't actually just read it all the way through. A lot of times we'll look at the pictures. My kids might even pick a favorite. And um, again, we'll look it up on YouTube or Amazon. Or, uh, sorry, Google. Amazon. You can tell Amazon's on my brain. So that's how we use this book. Along with this book, we also have um, several worksheets. So... I downloaded um, and paid for something from Teachers Pay Teachers that's kind of like a, was like a um, learn about animals packet. And it was all kinds of animals and I just pull the things that I want to use. So we have the life cycle of snakes that we're going to talk about and um, then they can color some individual pictures, um, cut them out and put them in their journal and we kind of draw little arrows and then they might narrate to me and I'll write down for them something about snakes. So we'll probably do that on the day we look at the snake book. And then um, parts of a sea turtle. So I just pull these on the day that we talk about sea turtle. It might be from the encyclopedia book. Um, we have one on snakes. Or it might be one of the read alouds we do because we have a lot of picture books for this unit. And then parts of a crocodile. So wherever it makes sense, I kind of pull it in. Um, and I like, too, that my kids don't have to write all of the words. They can kind of just cut and paste, and they really like that. And they'll often do this while I'm reading aloud to them from a book. At the end of our unit, I like to do this reptile sort. So I just pulled a bunch of pictures and wrote underneath what they are. We cut this out, and we sort this together into reptile or not reptile. And once we're done with this together, then my kids each have one of these that they do themselves. And what I'm looking for is, can they tell which one's a reptile and which one's not a reptile? And especially since we did the um, this one together right before they do this one, it um, it's pretty easy for them. So that's what we do with that. And then um, with this encyclopedia, of animals, they have a front section that isn't about a particular animal. So I'm looking for where that is. So here. So this whole front section is just all about general animals. And then the back, this whole, the meat of the book, so this whole section of the book, um, each page is about a different animal. Sometimes the animals have two pages, but generally it's about a page um, for each animal and there's a lot of content for each animal. So this has been fantastic for like, oh, we want to look up beetles. So we just read this page or um, bats. 
And so um, what I really like to use this book for, at least in the beginning, and not just looking up animals, is um, they have a lot in the beginning of the book, like animal homes and shelters and burrows and um, the world of habitats, things like this. So for this particular unit, I pulled um, about camouflage because we're going to be talking about um, reptiles and um, chameleons and their great camouflage. So we're going to be talking about that. And then we're also going to be talking about desert. So we will go ahead and read this as well. And then anything interesting we find, we will look up in um, the rest of the encyclopedia. But I don't actually assign anything beyond those two pages in this book. Okay, so with that book, we have um, two things that we do. So we're doing um, this camouflage art project, and I thought this was really cool. So basically, you take a printed piece of paper, something with a pattern or cloth or something, and then you take a white piece of paper and you draw your animal, and then you try to camouflage your animal against that. So I don't even know if you can see it, but there is a lizard here. And I thought this was really, looked really fun and cool. Um, so we're going to be doing that for camouflage. And then um, also from that geography book, I pulled this desert and plains on the plain. Um, so you're gonna be cutting out these animals and putting them on the plain. Um, and then another one on desert habitat. So we have those five worksheets on that. And we keep um, science journals, social studies journal, and an art journal. So these will go into our um, social studies journal. Um, with the desert aspect, um, we're going to be talking about cactuses. So um, there is a page in here that is about succulent and cacti. This book is beautiful if you haven't seen it yet. It's um, Botanium and um, I love all the kind of older school imagery. I went to art school. I think this book is so beautiful. Um, but we'll just spend a day talking about cactuses and how they survive in such a harsh climate and then um, typically what we do is we just look up these numbers and um, read about these different cactuses and then we just read this little um, paragraph and if my kids are interested in one in particular we'll look it up. So that's with that book. And then continuing on with the desert kind of theme, I have these two read alouds. So Desert Night and Desert Day, we've actually had this book for a while and I love it so much. I've had it for about two years. And um, we picked it up at a national park. And it's just, this, the images are stunning. It's so beautiful. And I love the dichotomy between talking about, you know, what goes on in the day, which we often can see, and um, also what goes on at night. And I don't feel like the night is too dark or scary. It, um, it's really quite beautiful. So um, I really love this. And I love pulling in um, read-alouds from the different um, subjects that we're doing. So this is Desert Day and Desert Night. And then the other book that I got is Nobody Hugs a Cactus, which I just thought was super cute. Um, and this is just a cute little picture book about a cactus living in a window and all of the animals and things that interact with it um, throughout the day. So I actually haven't read this, but um, at the end of this unit, I will do a review and um, let you know how we like the projects and what books were our favorite and not. Um, for our read-alouds for this unit, I have um, the Greeting from Somewhere series. So we're reading all of these. I got all of the books and in each continent, we're visiting two or three of these, one or two of these books. So this one's The Mystery of the Lion's Tail, and it's talking about a safari. So these are quick, short reads. We typically can do this in kind of two sessions. Um, and while I read this, the kids are typically doing a coloring page or painting or doing Play-Doh or Legos or something like that. We're also going to be reading Who is Jane Goodall. This is um, from the Who is series, and I we've only done one of these, but we really, really love this series. Um, I'm, some of you have recommended that I check out Costco um, in the comments, so I'm going to definitely look and see if I can find kind of um, the group set of this because we really like this book. 
And then for our big read aloud, we're going to be reading The One and Only Ivan. Um, I've heard wonderful things about this book. It is a thicker book, but the font is pretty big and pretty wide spaced. So this will span the entire unit, and I'm anticipating this unit with all of the books that we have and projects and things will take about a, um, six weeks. So continuing on with our animal um, spines. So I have some more spines to share with you. So this Nature Anatomy book, it is hit or miss. I want to love this. And I do love it for certain reasons. But I find it, I do love it, but I find it impractical to use. I guess I should say it that way. So I just used this for Asia for a bug unit. And it was great because it had like 15 pages. But for this particular unit, it had two and has no content. It just has some pictures, which are gorgeous and which we can use kind of with our art or as inspiration for our notebook. But it, yeah. So hit or miss, I'm hoping we're going to be doing a marine biology unit soon. And I, I have the Her Oceans one, and I'm hoping that that one is way better easier to use and more practical because it's only about oceans. It's not trying to cover nature, like which is such a broad subject. So um, not using that this book that much, this unit. Wild Animals of the South, we love this book. This is by Dieter Braun and um, there's a south one and a north one. So I have both and uh, obviously Africa is in the southern unit or the southern hemisphere. So um, this has a whole section on Africa, and these pictures are stunning. We love this book. So we did this already. Um, I'm just trying to find the end. So this is South America. So they have so many beautiful pictures, just a little bit of content, you know, for some of these animals, like the spotted hyena. Um, they're typically about 15 pages per continent. And I go ahead and um, split that up by three days. So we do five, five pages in a day. And that ends up being great for my kids and their attention span and what they can handle. So this is beautiful. And then the Animal Liam book we love as well. Um, and this had a whole um, gallery on reptiles. So this would be great. We're definitely going to be using this. Um, we have the Gila Monster horses, um, turtles, and terrapins, snakes, crocodiles, and alligators, and the habitat of deserts, which is fantastic. It's exactly what I love. This, so this book will get used um, quite a bit. We'll probably do a page a day because, you know, there's a lot going on on every single page in this book. Okay, continuing on with the animals, we have our poetry book. So this is Around the World on 80 Legs. I love this book. Um, it's broken out by continent. So there's North America, South America, Africa, Europe, um, Asia, and then and, uh, Australia and Antarctica. Um, these are pretty short poems. Um, we can finish them you know, pretty quickly. There's about eight of them per continent and then I just usually go and pull one or two of the ones that I like or something I want to focus on and so for this unit I chose um, zebra and I chose this one because it has um, funny um, rhyming and then I also liked how this poem in particular is written I can't remember what the style is called I have to look it up because I want to teach my children, but um, it's where you write the poem and the construction of the poem is part of um, the poetry. So we're going to do that. And then I have a uh, quite a bit of um, nonfiction animal books that we are going to read. So we have um, stuff on reptiles. So we have, and my Kids will typically read this. So my son will read the level twos, and my daughter, if we have level ones in here, will read those, and they read them to each other. So we have lizards. Fly Guy presents snakes, and this is deceptively good. So Fly Guy is a really cute series. They have a nonfiction series that my son really likes that um, he reads at night, his read-aloud time at night. 
but um, their books on um, a particular subject have a ton of content and there's just enough of fly guy in here to keep my kids attention through the whole thing so I actually really love these books we haven't read this one yet but we've read other ones in the series and we really like them um, we have snakes turtles and then that is it for the reptiles then we have some just general Africa animals so giraffes and these are really great so this is a level one reader this is something that my five-year-old can read um, to my son and like I said the number twos like this cheetah one has a little bit more text and content but my kids um, really enjoy these they're short enough where they don't um, kind of lose interest and we really like them um, and then we have Roar, which is a level three, which my son can read as well, but I might, um, he might fatigue and I might help him with a couple pages or we'll break this three one up into two days. Okay, so then for our nonfiction animal books, we have What If You Had Animal Hair? And we did one of these in South America, What If You Had Animal Teeth? And it was really cute. Um, they learned a little bit. This isn't all about Africa, but um, I just thought it was cute with the, um, what if you had animal hair? And then they show the kids who actually have the hair of that particular animal. So my kids think this is funny and um, yeah, it's, it's a really cute, really cute concept, really cute idea. Um, we have Verdi, which is a story about a snake. I actually don't know very much about this. Like I said, we haven't um, done this unit yet, and I haven't pre-read um, all of these yet, but this looked like a beautiful book. Um, it has quite a bit of content, so it's a longer read aloud, but um, it looked really fun. So we're going to go ahead and read this. And then Art and Max is just a really cute read aloud um, about uh, I'm an artist. I went to art school. So um, I just thought that this one was really funny and apparently it's a little bit kind of about camouflage and a little um, funny he's trying to reconstruct Arthur. So um, this looked great and I'll, like I said, I'll, at the end of this um, unit I go ahead and post a review on all of our books. This one's really great. So this is um, Secrets of Animal Camouflage. So obviously we're going to be talking about camouflage. But this is a Shine the Light book, and I'm going to go ahead and grab my phone because I finally have my phone here because I want to show you how cool this book is. So if you shine a light behind the book, then it goes ahead and it shows you um, the animal. And um, my kids love these books. So um, really fun. We really like it. And then... We have Jumanji. So this um, this particular book, I'll probably read it at the end, maybe while we're doing one of the puzzles. Um, it comes with a CD, but I don't actually know what is on the CD yet. Um, but this is just um, a fun story. They haven't seen the movie yet. I kind of I wish this was in color, but it's still a beautiful book, and it'll be a really fun story. And my kids will be captivated, so I um, am excited to read this to them. Okay, so last couple things. So I have um, our kind of social studies, um, geography um, books. So we have this book, If You Lived Here, Houses Around the World. Um, this is a really beautiful book. It is very thin, so there aren't um, many examples in here, which is a little sad. And for oddly enough, the table of contents is in the back of the book, which I find strange. So you can see for Africa, there was only one, um, one home, um, where Europe, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So I don't understand. Um, anyway. Uh, this one has a home located in Pretoria, South Africa. Um, it's a Nedebi, Nedebel, um, but it looks really beautiful. We're going to go ahead and talk about that. And then I went ahead and just did some research and pulled a couple more. So we have some Asante, which is like um, their homes that are built in like a circle and like a family group, um, which I thought was really interesting. 
And then um, the other one I pulled is a Dorsey. It's from Ethiopia. The hand weave all of this together. So we're going to watch a video on that. And then I have a picture of um, what's inside because they actually do some room partitions. So then there's a little bit more privacy and different rooms inside. So I thought that was interesting. And then... Um, we have a year full of stories. We love this book. It's 52 folk tales and legends from around the world. Um, I think you can learn so much about a culture just by reading their folk tales. Um, this book is separated by month. So you can see May and um, April 7th. And we don't use it the way it's intended. Instead, I go through, and this is a Welsh story. This is a German story, so I'll go through, and I haven't done it yet, but I'll go through and I'll flag all the stories that are from Africa, and then we'll just systematically go through, and once a day we'll read one of these stories. Children Like Me is a really fun book that my kids love, and I think it really um, hits home and showcases um, the culture in a way that my kids can understand. This is a DK book, and... Um, they do have a section. So this is broken up by continent, so they have an Africa section, just a general about Africa, which we usually read in the first day or two. And then they have several kids um, from Africa. I love that they're all darker skinned, because I'm going to show you a book in a minute, and it drove me crazy because most of the people were white. Um, but they have... Um, they have different families, different ethnicities, um, what they like, what the kids like to eat, where they go to school, what their families are consist of. They do have some blended families in here, some divorced parents. Um, it would be nice if there was some BIPOC in here, um, but we're not there yet. Um, so anyway, my kids really love this, and it really showcases um, really kind of different people from around the world and where they live and how they cook and what they eat and um, this is a really great book. I really love it. Illumin Atlas is a new book. So <laughs> I bought this in a haul for next year, intending it for it to be next year, thinking that this was about America and it isn't. It's about the world. So I'm pulling this in for Africa. Um, why that? I think my kids are going to love this book. It's going to be really cool because it has these glasses. And you pull these out, and depending on which window you look through is what you can see um, on that page. So they have red for cultural highlights, they have green as a map, and they have um, blue for natural wonders. So they did have a section on Africa, and like I said, this is a new book, so we haven't used this yet. They have a short um, description here. And then they have kind of what you're going to be looking at and the highlights for that. So it looks like there are kind of two made pages. So this is Welcome to Africa. This is the map. It has up in the upper right hand corner. And then it has cultural highlights and natural wonders, which is great. And then we move on to the next one. So it looks pretty short. I don't really know what to expect. I'm going to schedule this for two days and see kind of where that lands us. Um, I usually schedule a couple buffer days, sometimes up to a week if it's a long unit, to kind of give us some extra time for all those extras. So um, if that goes over two days, then that's fine. Um, this is a sticker atlas that is a Usborne atlas that I thought my kids would like, but they love this so much, and I'm so glad I got it because I was almost on the fence about it. Um, it's broken out by continent, but they have a world view, which just talks about the best of the best or the, the most unique aspects. So for North America, it was talking about the smallest hummingbird and the tallest tree. For Africa, we're talking about how giraffes are the tallest animal, cheetahs are the fastest animals, and ostriches are the largest bird. So for that, I went ahead and I made these um, worksheets that we're going to be putting in our um, social studies journal. So we were just, just to show them their dad is six feet. So I showed them daddy and then how big the giraffe is compared to daddy. And then again, the same with the ostrich. And my kids can color or work on this when um, I'm doing a read aloud. 
Oh, and what I do with this is um, there are so many pictures per page. So you can see there are probably 40, maybe 50 stickers on this page. So I break it up by area. So if we're talking about Egypt, maybe we'll do kind of Egypt, Libya, and Chad. And I will just pull the stickers for those three countries. And what I do is I go in the back and I cut out the ones that we're going to use. And then I have those five or six stickers that I can hand them that, and then they can go ahead and do those particular stickers. I started out with them going in the back and trying to find the sticker themselves, but then they got lost and then they wanted to do all the stickers and it, it just, this way is way better. Um, so they have a North Africa because they couldn't fit it all on one page and then a South Africa. So there's a lot here. We typically do four to eight stickers a day and then um, anything that they find particularly interesting we will look up in a book or online or on YouTube. Um, this is the book that I was talking about. So Atlas of Adventures, I have really liked this up until this unit when I was planning for this unit and I'm just like, I don't understand. So this is Africa. We're talking about Africa. There's a little um, short description up here. And then, um, you know, just a lot of little bits of fun content. This is sometimes hard to focus. We can't read all of them because my kids are too scattered all over the place. But we do learn quite a bit from books like this. So I still like it. Um, we talk about the pyramids. We talk about the camel caravan. And then we talk about um, Scorigal and Sengal, and then the Zambi River. The reason why I have a problem with Africa, and I haven't noticed it too much until we got here, but like I, there are so many white people on this page, and they're all being um, toured by the natives. And although I do realize that that's a small part of the tourism of this continent, I don't really think that that is what a majority is. You can see that all the white people are playing the sport and all of the black people and the Africans are watching the sport or playing music for the people playing the sport. Um, so I, and I do realize that there are some white people here, but they don't, it's just very, um, I mean, it's very obvious, so I wish that that was better. Maybe I'll go in with a colored pencil, I don't know. Anyway, that's the Atlas of Adventures, and it's something I could talk to my kids about, you know, um, identify it and have them see that. So these are two um, coloring sheets that I'm going to have the kids do. So we have Victoria Falls, and we're going to talk about that, and then um, the Pyramids of Giza. So one of the pages in the Atlas of Adventure was about pyramids. So we're going to be talking about that. And then I have four read-alouds for um, kind of the cultural aspect. So we all went on a safari by Laurie Cribbs, and it's a counting journey through Tanzania. So I thought that this was great. Um, it actually counts in, um, I actually don't know what the language is that they're, um, that they're speaking. I will look that up or read that before we start reading this book, but I just thought it was really cute. My five-year-old in particular um, will love this book. And then they talk about the animals of Tanzania in the back. Um, oh, it sounds like Swahili. So Swahili names, talks about the people, the facts, and then there's a cute little map. So I love books like this. Um, so we're counting in Swahili. And then I have um, Solwi. So Sully is a picture book, and I think that this book is just gorgeous. Um, this little girl um, wants to be lighter skinned, and her mother is telling her that she is gorgeous and beautiful. And I think that this book is simply stunning. I like the message. I'm really trying to teach my kids um, to be very inclusive, so um, I love this book. We haven't read it yet, but I'm, I'm, gonna be, I'm excited to read it. Um, Snowflower and the Panther. I don't know much about this book. It is a longer read aloud, um, but it is about a panther and catching an animal and they're trying to help him 
So um, I'm excited to read this one and I'll let you know what I think. And then the last one is The Elephant Keeper and it's caring for orphaned elephants in Zambia. Um, this is by Margaret Hers. And um, this one looked amazing. It's based on a true story. The art is so gorgeous. Um, and I like that it you know, has a lot of story and then also has facts as well. So anytime I can find books like this with a super engaging story that my kids can emotionally tie into, along with the content, um, learning why that this story is so important is um, fantastic. And, um, you know, there are some graphic elements. I kind of looked through this um, before. You know, this ele baby elephant is being taken away from its family. So, um, you know, sensitive younger kids, you have to be careful. Okay, so now getting to the crafts. So we have two, three art projects. Um, I have this really cool... Um, painting about um, Moroccan homes. I might actually pull in a few actual photos of Moroccan homes to put with our um, homes and looking at homes of Africa because I love how beautiful this is and I definitely want to do this. Um, we have been talking a lot um, in our last unit about pattern and if you look closely at this there's a lot of elements of pattern making in here. And uh, I think we're going to do this with chalk and maybe some puff paint or something that will kind of stick up because I think the patterns and doing these patterns with something that sticks up. And we might even do this kind of more collage style, style where we're pasting um, kind of these pattern pieces on top. But um, definitely look for a review for that because that looks really fun. This is a tearing project. So you tear these strips of colored... Um, construction paper and then you can go outside and do kind of various heights with um, animals and I have some figures that my kids can pick it doesn't have to be giraffes but then they can go ahead and trace those out and color them in with a black sharpie and you kind of get these really cool um, animals silhouetted in sunset which I thought looked really fun and then this last one um, is a collage, and they had several. They had the lion, they had a zebra, and a giraffe, and an elephant. But basically, they took multi layers of cardboard with what looks like some type of paint, and they did, again, if you look at his mane really closely, there's a lot of pattern on here, um, and a lot of like geometric shapes that we can kind of cut out. So this looked really fun and something that we want to do, which is kind of multiple layers of cardboard. Um, to continue with our projects, I bought this um, really cute kit. They're little stuffed animals and it looks adorable. So this one was an Africa one. Um, they have a leaf, they have a snake, <laughs> so cute. And um, they have this little um, lion it looks like. And what I love about these kits is it comes with everything you need. So you have like the embroidery thread, you have the stuffing. Um, they give you the needles and um, it looks like plastic or metal um, needles and uh, even a little tomato. Oh, this is so cute. And a pair of scissors. So um, I love kits like this because they're kind of, I do a lot of art with my kids because I love art and I'm, I'm an artist. But um, for people who don't have a lot or just want everything all in one kit, then these kits are fantastic. Um, so we're going to be doing that. And then I also got these yarn elephants, which looks super fun. Um, they're like cardboard um, animals, and then you have to wrap them in kind of a pattern with this yarn. So this looks really fun and something that um, good motor skills for my kids and the age that they are. And then we have um, this geography puzzles that we do um, with each unit. So um, this is um, by Geo Toys. It's for ages four and up. Um, my kids do this together. So we're going to be doing the Africa one and um, I pulled the Africa piece and then it also has an Africa map. So this is really great. It helps my kids learn about um, the continent 
and um, I can read a book while they're doing this to them. And then lastly, we love puzzles a lot here, so we get a lot of puzzles. Um, I have this puzzle. This is more ambitious, so normally I stay under 500 or less. This is an 1,000 piece puzzle, so this might actually take us a lot longer. What I might do is I might do the border, and I might do all of the blue and some of the ground, and then I might group the animals in like piles and then let my kids start building some of the outside animals first and work their way in. Um, I find that with these bigger, harder puzzles, that works really well for us. So we're going to be doing that. And that is it for this unit. Um, like I said, it'll take us about six weeks. We tend to spend an hour in the morning on our English language arts and then an hour on this unit um, after that. So we do two hours in the morning. We break for lunch, and then we typically do another hour to an hour and a half in the afternoon. Um, mostly that's around this unit, that this focused unit, or we might add in a little bit of English language arts and writing or reading to that. But typically that, that time is centered around the unit. So we typically get about an hour and a half to two hours a day that's focused on these units, and I like doing these intense focuses where you know, right now we're focusing on Africa, but, you know, the next unit we might focus on marine biology, and then the next unit might be a science unit. So it works really well for us, and um, I hope this video was helpful, and you have a great day. Thanks.